Hey everybody, this is Bob with Edworks. Today what we're going to do is we're going to wire up a Prolite 1000. My friend Jim found a Prolite 1000. Uh, he's got it over at the shop and we're going to wire that thing up. He bought himself a Masso controller. I've done three of these conversions and we've done an open builds conversion. We did a path pilot conversion and now we're going to do a Masso conversion so you get to watch along. Got several videos here. Uh, this video just kind of takes it uh, start to finish. There's a couple more videos that we're going to have that are going to be very detail oriented. I apologize for the quality of the audio because it's just me talking into the best mic I could find. Uh, but uh, it just goes through some of the details of wiring and the details of setting up the control box. These videos aren't for everybody, but I hope you enjoy this one. We kind of go through the story. But if you, the devil's in the details, and if you need the details, you got those extra videos on hand everybody this is our little uh, Prolite 1000 that we picked up on eBay this unit uh, came from a school system they almost all do what I find which is very amazing about these machines is very few of them have been used to any extent uh, I've seen several that I'm pretty sure were never turned on other than to make all the lights blink there's no evidence of any aluminum or any cutting uh, fragments in the bellows. The bellows are clean. This one was particularly noticeable for it was in a uh, environment with a lot of sawdust, so it was covered with sawdust. Uh, the table was preserved with some uh, preservative like an LPS3, probably from the factory. That was still in place. We had to clean that off. Uh, some of the issues that we had with this particular machine, very clean machine, but the uh, this switch was broken off. This is a switch where you choose between manual control or computer control. The emergency stop switch was in place. The uh, spindle speed, which is just a pot, was in place. So all I had to do was just put this switch in here, which worked out pretty good. This uh, machine does not come with the grab handles. There's grab handles that come through here, but it did have the covers for the grab handles, and I frankly have never seen them before. All the machines I've seen have had holes there. This machine also has uh, the Boyer Schultz system. Boyer Schultz is a system here. This uh, uh, um, tip uh, is you just turn this with your hand and uh, the collet falls out. You put in another collet and you can just turn it back in place. It's a toolless uh, collet system, uh, very slick and very expensive. Uh, this, uh, this probably runs for about $800. It's an R8 collet that has the Boyer Schultz connector on it. A Boyer Schultz tool holder is about $250, up to $350 if it has an ER collet. That's the new price. You sometimes can get them for $30 or $40 a piece, which is doable, uh, but they're just hard to come by. Uh, fortunately, one of my machines came with a complete set of Boyer Schultz uh, uh, tool holders, so I can go that route. But what I recommend is that this be taken out and removed and then go talk to Little Machine Shop or Tormach and have them send you the Tormach tool system. The Tormach tool system is an R8 collet that fits in here. There's a hole in the bottom or shank for a three quarter inch shaft. That three quarter inch uh, R8 collet is flat on the bottom as it is mounted. And then the, the TTS tools just slip up inside there. You tighten this up and it locks them in place. A TTS tool can be bought from Tormac for $30 or $40. They can be bought online for uh, $20 to $30, and they can be bought from China for $8 to $10. So you can really come up with a, a good tooling system for a whole lot less than just one collet would cost you uh, for the Boyer Schultz. The layout of this machine is pretty straightforward. What we have here is an 80 volt motor. In this box here, we have a gear reduction with a stepper motor. The stepper is uh, 24 to 48 volts. We're running it on 48 volts. In the bellows here is a micro switch. This is the home switch for the Z axis. At the bottom of the bellows, there's another micro switch, probably unnecessary because when you start to lower uh, the spindle, the Boyer Schultz will hit the tabletop before it ever gets to trigger the uh, micro switch underneath the bellows. These controls both for the z-axis and the two micro switch comes out of a db9 uh, cable that's on the back of the unit there's also a db15 cable in the back of the unit and that powers 
this. This is a stepper with a 10 to 1 gear reduction uh, that runs the Z axis back and forth. Remember, these are on ball screws, so they're very accurate. In addition, in this box here, there's another gear reduced 10 to 1 stepper that runs the Y axis. Underneath this bellows here, there's a micro switch, which is the Y homing switch. On the back side, there is also a micro switch, uh, which is probably not going to be used in our application. Here we have a switch that is open. When you open the protective glass cover, that switch closes. This is a safety switch for the cover. So when the cover is closed, the machine runs. When the cover opens up, the machine doesn't run. That's an okay feature. The only problem with it is that with this cover being so limited, you have to make sure your workpiece fits in there. It's not uncommon where I'll have a workpiece that needs to come off the tabletop and extend onto this glass. Well, you simply can't do it unless you do this, and that is just set a magnet on here, and you can put down the glass and then operate with the, with the screen down. In addition to this motor here, underneath this, micro, underneath this magnetic switch is a micro switch that's right under here. That is the right stop. Probably won't be using that. And when you come around here, you can actually see two screws in the bed um, right here and right here. Underneath, these, underneath this table is a micro switch, and that is your X homing switch. So you have your X homing switch here, you got your Y homing switch here, and you got your Z homing switch up here. And it's just a matter of determining what those are. I can include some tables on what color wires they are. However, I do have to warn you that with all of these machines, the wiring is different. In fact, the control boxes are different. This is your standard control box for a light machines. It has some very dated uh, circuit boards in there. It has a proprietary card that goes in your computer that operates this on proprietary software. The thing you need to remember is that these are not the same. One machine will be one way, another machine will be another way. Uh, the interiors of these boxes, I haven't seen two the same. I understand there's probably about four different types of them that are available. And uh, we just chuck that. These machines are basically of little value except for the box. I see them on eBay for as much as $800 and sometimes as little as uh, $200. They're probably worth $100, providing you know what you're getting. The first thing you want to do is junk the board in there and uh, do what we did, which is mount stepper controllers and some DB25, DB15, and DB9 connectors in the back end of it and that will let you do your control work. In the back of this machine is the control box. In here, there is a uh, relay that allows the spindle to work, so you have to power up the relay to let the spindle work. There's a spindle controller uh, that uh, will take your zero to 10 volts and uh, convert that to a spindle speed and then the rest of it is just uh, fuses and stuff. So the, 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 this chamber is fairly wide open, a little bit of wiring going through there, but not much in there. Uh, I have taken that space and put in all my controls in there, but it's quite tight and it is a bit of a heating issue. On the back side, you can see where things are coming down. This big cable that comes out of the back here, this is the 15 wire pin, or wire that, a cable that goes to the DB15. It has both the X and Y axis and the X and Y end stops for right, left, front, and back. This cable here, which comes down from up on top, has four wires for the stepper for the Z axis. It also has the Z top and Z bottom um, wiring for those end stops. The other wire that comes out of the back here is the uh, goes right to the motor control. This These has some very fine wires that are attached to it. Red is positive, brown is negative, there's a ground wire here, and those hook up to your controller, and if your controller can kick out from zero to 10 volts, it'll stop and start your spindle. On the front of the machine is a switch, and when you switch it to CNC, it takes that voltage off that line. When you switch it to manual, you just dial up your speed of your spindle, and uh, that works well. Most of these machines have not seen a lot of time uh, when you run them for the first time, you'll smell some odors, but it's usually just dust 
that has found its way uh, where it shouldn't be. If you need to oil this machine, a little bit tricky here, but underneath here, up in the top there, you can see that little dot there. It doesn't come in very clear because my, my, my machine doesn't focus, but that's an oiling port. Uh, that's the oiling port for the x-axis. There's another set of them down here for the y-axis. There you can see it. And then here on the z-axis, I can actually show it to you. This little ball, you take your oil can and you put it up to that hole and you shoot some oil in there and it just takes regular whey oil or any other oil if you want to use it. On the top here, you can see where there's an Allen wrench that fits up in here and that lets you hold um, or that lets you unscrew the RA collet. If you need to lock the spindle in place, there's a quarter inch hole here. You need a quarter inch drift pin. You slip that in there, it will lock the spindle and then you can go ahead and turn it out. And that's how that works. What you see on the back side is our power in. That's original, hasn't been touched. We also have three power outs. Those are original and they have not been touched. One of the power outs will become useful because as you may recall is that the, in this box here, there is a relay uh, that's up on top here. And that relay needs to be energized to allow the spindle to work. When that relay is energized, the spindle gets power. When the relay loses its energy, the spindle does not get power. That comes from here. So basically, when you turn this on, it energizes the spindle up above. Here we have the C axis, which is also Z axis. Here we have A and B axis, which are also X and Y axis. Here we have TTLIO. That actually is the fourth axis, also known as the A axis. Over here, we have the computer. And this is the, uh, the, the uh, DB25 that connects to the MASO. Now, on the other side of these boards, or on the other side of this uh, case wall, uh, there is a breakout board. And that breakout board allows you just to have screw terminals to hook up all the wires. Uh, although we did a fair amount of soldering, tinning all the wires, getting them ready to be screwed in, uh, all these connectors, all four of these connectors, have just a breakout board on the inside of the case and you just tie into them as you need to. With this, there's also a few uh, uh, fuses for the spindles. Uh, we use the main um, uh, fuse, the motor drive fuse, and uh, the uh, spindle fuse. Uh, these two are not utilized uh, because as of right now, we're not using the accessory one, or, uh, accessory two or accessory one. Uh, so that gives you a notion of being able to utilize the case no modification to the case whatsoever. That's the beautiful thing. I think the only thing we modified in the entire case was we just happened to take all the rust off of these little screws, which is pretty straightforward. The backside of the Masso, there's a small slot here, and we got three cables coming out there of the slot. Inside the box, we actually have a nice little uh, acrylic board, and these, ca and these uh, cables are actually attached to that to give them a little bit of stress relief. Other than that, they come out. This cable here is our pre-produced uh, uh, cable that just has our DB25 uh, connector on it. And that is pretty straightforward. All we had to do is identify what we were doing with each one of the wires. So what I did is on pins uh, 1 through, through uh, 16, I went to X, Y, Z, and A motors. And so that took care of 16 lines. We also had um, limit switches. We had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six limit switch and a cover switch. That's seven. So that's seven more. So 16 uh, add seven, we end up at 23. Uh, we had to run power to it, which is a five volt line. And so actually two of the lines are five volts in. So we used every pin uh, for that. Here we have uh, 24 volts from our open builds power supply. This 24 volt line goes right in goes right to the Masso board. In addition to that, we have the cable for our, our pendant controller, our MPG controller. This has a DB, I think 15 plug that goes in there, mounts right in the side of the Masso. And so uh, this connects there. That also has a strain relief on it so we can't uh, give too much uh, torque on the uh, wiring and cause it to pull out. It's well protected from that. With that, we have this nice uh, monitor um, uh, mount. This is a Visa mount uh, that's designed for computer monitors. Uh, very flexible, very movable, really puts things in nice positions. Um, the holes in the back of the Masso, they're already pre-drilled. Uh, you don't have to do much of anything. 
100 millimeter uh, visa on this one. However, this one here, we also have a 75 millimeter mount. So it has to, you have to use the adapter plate on a 75 to give it to under 100 and mount that. And that worked out quite nicely. So what you see here is a completely assembled uh, ProLite 1000. Uh, using the ProLite box, we were able to put in our stepper drivers in there, put in a power conditioner and use that power supply. On top of the uh, box by Light Machines, we have an open builds uh, voltage converter. This gives us uh, 12 or 24 volts, whatever, what, whichever model we have, and that powers the Masso. The Masso is all set up. It's its own computer with a touch screen. We now have touch control of this machine and everything works quite nice as expected. With it, uh, we also have a pennant to control things, so we're set up and ready to roll. Hey everyone, thanks for watching how we added the Masso G3 Touch to the ProLite 1000 on Jim's machine. I plan on making three more videos. These videos are gonna be quite detailed, not really meant for everybody, but for those that want more information about doing a project like this, I discuss how we handled the wiring. I discussed how we uh, program the Masso. And lastly, what did we do exactly inside that box to convert it to a modern system and use standardized components? At any rate, I hope you found this interesting and I hope you found it helpful if you ever want to do a project like this. Have a good day. I just can't say enough about this arrangement here. Uh, we got our control box below the Masso. We have our power supply below the Masso. We have our unit, uh, the ProLite uh, sitting there. A uh, pretty darn clean unit. Uh, this is well organized, uh, well set up. Uh, just magnificent for, for an old, bringing back an old machine back to life. Uh, this is just an absolutely magnificent way to do it.